Hey everybody, this is Dak Mag from the Golfing Ghost Arcade out in Brookfield, Illinois. Today is Thursday, July 30th, 2020. We are here at the Galloping Ghost Arcade. Been an insane day. So many things going on. Um, been like that pretty much nonstop these last couple of weeks, gearing up for the uh, 10 year anniversary. Uh, usual typical day here at the arcade, you know, it's uh, great to see everybody here. Uh, some of the regulars we've seen, uh, Eric Kim join us today. Great chat with him, an amazing chat with him. Uh, great talk with so many other people online and here at the arcade, so we appreciate all the support. Shout outs to Josh and uh, Jay and Timothy Roth, what is up man? And Greg Brandon and Thomas Roth, what is up? Thank you all for being here. Uh, as you saw, we started on Ralph from Rampage, right there. How cool is Ralph? Most people don't know this, but uh, George, Lizzie, Ralph, uh, in the game, in the intro, they show the, uh, the human forms of the characters. Of course, Brian Cullen was supposed to be George the Ape, uh, Lizzie, Brian's wife, and uh, Ralph was Jeff Nauman. So we were out at Jeff Nauman's house. He donated a few things to the arcade. Um, one of which was a power drive bezel. Uh, we'll show that on the actual original cabinet, the one that we have from before. But uh, cool things about uh, some of the artwork on that that we di I didn't know. So we will be uh, going and talking about that. Shout outs to uh, Dan Igavelli, thank you for being here. And Michael and Sean and Barsum. What is up, man? Great to have you here. Thank you. Hope everything is going well by you. Uh, can't wait for you to come back out, man. Looking forward to it. But as I was saying, so some of the stuff that Jeff donated, one was this Tron coffee mug. Very, very cool. Just some things from Bally Midway. Got a, a Pac-Man coffee cup. Pretty cool artwork on that. And Kickman. Another cool, cool game. Uh, Jeff had donated a marquee called uh, Bigfoot, which was the original uh, name for Kick when it was in development. We, of course, have the extremely limited run marquee of Kick. This version was the first one that went out. The first few hundred were just known as Kick. Later ones were known as Kick Man. Before it was called Kick, though, they were testing it as Bigfoot. And uh, from we got an unreleased test marquee from uh, Jeff Nauman for Bigfoot, which is amazing to have. Michael Tier checking in saying, The Shed says hello. Hello to everybody out at The, uh, the Shed. Thank you for, for joining us, man. Uh, Everett saying, uh, Show us a high score on Super Mario Brothers. All right, we can do that. We'll be right back to... Uh, got one more thing to show from uh, hanging out Jeff Nauman's. Jeff gave us boxes and boxes of stuff. And so much to go through. Right there, the uh, versus Super Mario Brothers card. As I was saying, Jeff, super generous in everything that he donated to us. There's going to be a lot of stuff we have to go through. A um, couple of things that uh, we can't mention just yet. Some surprises in the works. Shout outs to Jason Crow, Ghost for Life, saying can't wait till, until I can visit. Looking forward to it, man. It's uh, It'll be a fun time when you're here. Uh, but here's another thing that Jeff donated. This was uh, one of the first printed Arch Rivals marquees. And we'll go over by Arch Rivals just so we can do kind of the side-by-side uh, -side comparison. Uh, this was before the game was out and they were, they were working on it. Here you can see the original backlit marquee. It is uh, screen printed on on Plexi, but this is one of the prototypes. And what they had done with this one before they went to screen printing, they were doing these test print ones, which are printed on uh, paper and then attached to the vinyl or to the Plexi. So this was like the original, this is like hand inked and everything. Crazy to see this and amazing that Jeff donated it to the arcade. 
it's it's a, a piece, true piece of history. It's uh, this was like the first time Arch Rivals. This was right before they went to print. And this is the design that got approved. Um, let's see. One of the I wish I know we have the uh, Bigfoot marquee. I think that actually might be down in the vaults. Otherwise, we'd show that right now. But uh, amazing! So much cool stuff coming from Jeff now, man. Um, got a couple of sleeves of ROMs, which is always an interesting thing because we have to cross compare them to the other ROMs that are out there, see if there's uh, potentially earlier builds, uh, prototype versions, or anything like that. So that's always an amazing thing to check out and uh, see if there's a version of the game that maybe we haven't seen before. David, what is up? Thank you for joining us. Hope you're having a great day. And uh, Chris asking, how, how am I doing? I'm doing great, I'm doing great. Very awesome time talking with Eric Kim a little bit earlier, very fun, uh, very, in an uplifting chat. It's uh, always great to talk with so many of the regulars and uh, been seeing him in a while and great to see him back on uh, Macross and everything. So very cool with that. James saying, so glad Star Wars is up and running. I got two hours in this morning already. Very awesome, man. I was hoping that you were going to get to play that uh, before you had to take off and uh, very happy that Doug Fox had that monitor with him yesterday and got it hooked up today so very awesome on that uh, Francisco hello hello and um, Gabe asking how NARC is NARC right down here got to you know I hadn't played all the way through NARC in a little bit and uh, when I was hanging out, LaCats was here last Saturday, and me and him got to play through that one. A lot of fun, so awesome. And uh, what a what a great game, what a great game. I don't, that game will never get old to me. Uh, Izzy asking, you're not open to the public? Uh, we are open to the public. Uh, we opened up back in June. Um, so we are, we are open. Uh, we're not at regular hours yet. Um, currently we are Sunday through Thursday, 11 a.m. through to midnight, and then Friday, Saturday, 11 a.m. till 2 in the morning. Galloping Ghost Pinball, on the other hand, uh, currently it's open right now. We had um, a couple of people in really interested in playing pinball, so we're like, yeah, we can open that up for you. And they're over there now, so um, probably have pinball open until around 8.30 tonight, uh, shorter night. Pinball currently is open on Fridays and Saturdays uh, from 3 p.m. till 11. Trying to get that back up to regular hours, but uh, it's tough, we're still working on it. So we'll get there though, we'll get there. Just take some time. Uh, Chris saying, hey doc, what does your team use to dump ROMs? I have a few Genesis ROMs I need to get dumped. Early builds of Spot and Mick and Mac. Very cool. So, uh, for Genesis ROMs, you'd need some sort of adapter to go from the cart ROMs to like uh, a standard ROM reader. Uh, it's out there. I'm not too familiar with that. I haven't backed up any cartridge-based games out there. Um, probably just a matter of buying a converter, though. So, uh, if you want us involved, uh, let it. Let us know. We're, it's much easier for arcade games just because it's the standard. Um, just ROMs that uh, all ROM readers, writers, uh, you just put them in, read them, and then you can just uh, back them up. So pretty easy on that side. Um, Bullmaster checking in, saying I'm interested in Galpico's Productions potentially creating a beat em up arcade for me. Any rough idea on how much something like that could cost? Well, that, that really depends. Um, the scope of the project, like uh, the time duration you're looking to put on it, um, there's, a lot, there's a lot to it. We, we look at the numbers on Dark Presence and just the sheer amount of uh, like hours that went into developing and creating that game, it's, it's, it can be a big number. Um, if you're using standard hardware, if you want something unique, uh, controls, there's a lot of things into that, but definitely hit me up on uh, Facebook or shoot me an email and uh, if you're serious about it, we can talk about a budget and we can go from there. 
Uh, Efren saying, hey Doc, I was there a couple days ago seeing you do a Monday Mystery Game episode. Very awesome. Thank you for joining us, man. It's uh, on uh, Monday we put up uh, Cyber Sled. Great Namco game from 1993. I was playing a little bit earlier today, got here, and uh, you know, having some of the newer, the later Monday Mystery Games, it's so hectic here. Not getting the amount, the uh, normal amount of time I like to put on the like, on the game. So sneaking in and getting some times on that for sure. Uh, Rob saying update on Dark Presence. Oh, it's coming! It's coming. We were supposed to put it on the arcade floor out in April. We were getting geared up. Everybody was working hard, hitting crunch time, and uh, then all the craziness happened, and we kind of had to hit the brakes for it. But uh, it's been progressing so well it's it's really the amount of effort and work going on to it is mind-blowing like the the game is playing really well I was watching uh, Jeremiah and McCuddy play earlier today they were having some great Trent versus Kyla matches still doing some fine-tuning and some balancing um, I still have a lot of music I got to put on it finishing moves are still being put in and everything so Progressing quick though, very, very happy uh, to be progressing at the speed that we are and cannot wait to get it in front of everybody. So it's coming up, it's coming up. Um, bad news to Cruz joining us in. Uh, bad news to Cruz, I'm at the grocery store shopping. Um, thank you for joining us, man. It's, uh, you should be out shopping, man. Like, why aren't you out shopping? It's, uh, you're watching our, our stream, that's, that's commitment and that's dedication, so we definitely appreciate that. Um, Brady Rain checking in, hope you're having a good day, man. Uh, saying, hey, Mr. Mac, I, last night I played Heavy Fire, Attack of the Month of the Movies 3, Buck Fever, Martian Panic. So you're, you're busy, man, you got a, quite the gaming lineup to go through. Very awesome. I, I, I know how you feel to have so many games that you want to play and uh, probably not enough time to play them all. Everett saying can't wait for 2021 when I can take my expedition up there. Be awesome, man. We can't can't wait to have you. Um, it's it's one of those, uh, definitely let us know when you're coming out. We're, we're give you the, pri the, the special tour. Um, Thomas Ross saying, have you seen the new Godzilla movie? Just watched it today, King of the Monsters. So I have not completely watched it. Um, I have been saving it for when I, I have a uh, specific kit that I'm going to be painting. So I want to work on that while I'm painting it. Hopefully pretty soon. It's been on the back burner. Heard very, heard very good things. Was upset. I was unfortunately missed it in the movie theaters, which... Uh, Hard to miss a Godzilla movie in the theaters, but uh, it happens. So it's it's one of those that'll be on the watch list pretty soon. Uh, Fat Chris, what is up, man? Very awesome to have you. Saying the awesomeness of Galpigos TV needs to be an actual channel. GGA on your TV tw 24 hours a day. Uh, Lou Malnati's can't come any quicker. It's coming up fast. It's coming up fast for sure. We had talked about doing a streaming network for a little bit. We actually have uh, Ghost TV, uh, GalpinGhostTV.com. Uh, just haven't ever get too many things on the plate. Too many things on the plate. Um, so one day, one day. It's uh, just got to get a few things knocked off first, and then we can go back to getting some of those cool things taken care of. But only a matter of time. Calvary Coon, Missile Command, recapped that monitor recently. Very happy that that's holding up. Great, you know, we've had been doing so many fixes and repairs. Again, great gain ground looking absolutely beautiful. Hot rod looking great. The Sega System 24 stuff, always, you know, these games, I worry about these games so much. Running on three and a half inch floppy diskettes. Uh, when they get shut off, it's very important that the games aren't shut off while the game is writing to the disc because it can actually damage the disc. So it's always a uh, 
one that you kind of have to watch and make sure that they're not getting shut down at a bad time. Otherwise it can cause a disc corruption and at that point you have to make a new disc for it. Cracked down, we actually recapped the monitor recently, that's looking great. Bonanza Brothers, we're having problems with this one. Fortunately, that's just like I was saying, this is one we had to make a new diskette for. Fortunately, Pete Gortz had donated us a computer that allows us to copy those discs perfectly and uh, it was great to get that back up and running. Scrabble Spirit, another great game. Game they were talking about putting out on the Genesis, but never did, so happy to have that here as well. Paula Cruz saying, uh, has anyone ever gotten a perfect bonus round on all five rounds of Shinobi? You know, that I'm not sure. Uh, maybe, if anybody has, it's probably Pete, but um, let's see, I'll, when, I, when he's comes back up, I'll ask him. Greg Brandon saying, go Jet, go jet uh, Jaguar. That's uh, from, from Godzilla. Uh, awesome, awesome character. Awesome character, to say, to say the least. Chris asking about the hours. So as we were saying earlier, the hours are um, pretty close to the same. Uh, 11, Sunday through Thursday, 11 a.m. till midnight. And then Friday, Saturday are our regular hours, 11 a.m. to 2 a.m. So anxious to get back up to our regular schedule, but just not there just yet. Robert saying, I plan on coming out uh, August 15th for the most arcade games played. Is that still on? So we're not, it's hard to say. It's, uh, I, I'm kind of uh, questioning if we will have that many people here. Um, the arcade being what it's been, like 124 people at one time is probably going to be unlikely. So we might postpone that event. We'll still be having the bash and everything, but uh, we'll have to see. We'll have to see how the day goes. It would be unlikely that that event will be going on. Um, we have not, even T20, it's been difficult to see what the turnout is going to be. We're excited. We want to do all this stuff, but uh, just the times being what they are, um, it's going to make it a little difficult. So we are going to do our best. If you're coming out for it, rest assured, it'll be a fun time. There'll be some surprises, and uh, it will be pretty amazing. I'm so looking forward to the Monday Mystery Game on uh, the 10th. That, I think mind-blowing so keep an eye out for that uh, but some of it will be um, just kind of we'll have to see what what's going on and play it by ear but a good time will be had um, John saying nice exterminator or whatever you just walked past exterminator yeah great game ours in very nice shape very cool artwork There's, uh, again, we've talked extensively with Jeff Lee. This marquee, like, how the expense of this game, the cost of this game was exorbitant. It was a very expensive game when it came out. People did not understand how to play it. Um, very unique controls on it. It's, it's almost like a battle zone stick. And when you're playing it, if you're on the far left or right side of the screen, your hand turns into a fist. So you can, um, or no, when you on the far side of the screen, it turns into a gun. So you can, you can shoot enemies. Uh, when you're anywhere else, you can press a button and it squashes stuff uh, and pounds the ground. So if there's a can underneath you, you can crush a can. Or if there's a bug underneath, you can crush that. Really cool, really unique. Uh, again, we've talked with Jeff Lee, who did the art. Jeff Lee, who of course did pretty much all the artwork on all the Gottlieb games. And uh, Warren Davis programmed the game. The hands in the game are actually also Warren Davis's hands, which was interesting to find out. And a lot of the locations, they're digitized locations, and they're from like that, that kitchen right there. Those hands are Warren Davis's hands. But then the kitchen is the kitchen that uh, Jeff Lee, like that was his kitchen in his house. So they just took photos from their houses and stuff and made them the levels. Super unique. 
the enemies are actually stop motion and many of them are clay which uh, Jeff Lee just found those I, if you look on his Facebook page he was posting um, about uh, he was showing a few of them off and showing the miniatures that they use for the game um, Oh, uh, Michael Guerin saying, uh, what's up? Uh, they played the phone scam again, where he, pl he plugs your place a lot. So, he's talking about Man Cow, uh, he did a uh, phone scam over here on the Galpin Ghost Arcade. Pretty funny, Tom answered the phone, and uh, Tom handled it well, I think. But uh, very cool, I hadn't, I was listening again today, I didn't hear it, but huge shout outs and thanks to Man Cow for all his help in promoting the arcade and, and getting the, the spreading the word out there is infinitely appreciated because that uh, guy's helping helping small businesses everywhere and uh, just such an awesome guy for doing that. So, um, Gabe saying you should try adding Neo Turf Masters. Maybe, maybe we will see. Keep watching for Monday Mystery. Maybe that'll pop up. Charles sending 420 stars to the arcade. Thank you very much for that, man. Very much appreciated. Uh, David saying, man, I need to take a trip out there. It's like a 16-hour drive. You know, even though it's a long drive, if you're in the arcades, and that's that's one building. That's There's still three more rooms that you can't see in that shot. There's this, which is our small room. This is the second building, which even though it's small, it's uh, very many of these boards out there. Awesome, very unique game, a lot of fun. Kung Fu Master, which we will be streaming relatively soon, hopefully. So uh, keep an eye out for that. That is going to be a great stream. We're trying to get more uh, going on our direct feed uh, streams, super rare Sega 2. Player Star Wars, which was later uh, ported to console, is uh, Star Wars 32X. So yeah, we normally I've, I've uh, changed up trying it on a non-Wi-Fi connection today. Going into this, we seem to be much better than usual. You can see this room holds a ton of games as well. And again, we get we get people asking about like social distancing and stuff. It's like this place is huge. Very easy to social distance in this place. It's uh, there's there's people here, but you know a lot of lot of open aisles. Super easy to just be in your own aisle and play for the long time. So, uh, Chance, what's up, man? Uh, how, can you show Judge Dredd? Absolutely, we can take a walk over by Judge Dredd. Just one second. You know, it's, it's an awesome man. Super rare game. If you like Strider, this was done by the same guys that did Strider, which we have Strider 1 and 2 right here. I've got another dedicated Strider cabinet in storage. Um, I think I cannot wait to get these two games split up. We've got so many games to split up. And ones. I don't know if I've mentioned this. Bloodstorm. We've got a dedicated Bloodstorm cabinet in storage, so we just need space. We need a lot of space. So once once the Canton expansion is done, we'll be able to be putting up a lot of good games. Forgot what I'm trying to show everybody. Judge Dredd, heading that way. Um, Paul the Cruz saying, I just want everybody in the stream to know that Doctor's the most amazing guy I've ever had the opportunity to be friends with. He's genuine, he takes time out for all of us and I appreciate it. Thank you so much for that, man. Very awesome of you, very much appreciate it. You know, doing these streams, I've got to meet so many new people and uh, have formed so many new friendships and it's just an amazing thing. So very much appreciate it for that. There's Judge Dredd. You know, it's hard to see, but uh, there are not many of these cabinets out there when we had initially tried to uh, we were building this cabinet up there's no 
original artwork out there. So this was a cabinet that was converted. Uh, we ended up having the ROMs for it and we're able to get everything running. It was a little tricky. There's some tricks on the board to get it to run. Uh, it took a little bit to figure it out. So if you don't do the board changes, it will crash nonstop. So it was quite the process to get Judge Dredd playable here. An unreleased midway prototype. Redid all the control panel art. But then the side art was super difficult. So we ended up finding a picture of Drudge Dredd, which was um, Sal DeVita wearing a big chin prosthetic and everything. It was so cool. Ended up with some really cool side art. But then we were hanging out uh, at uh, Alex Ross's house, who a legendary uh, DC comic book artist and he had an uncut piece of original Judge Dredd side art. And we, he was super generous enough to lend us that. He donated us a prototype Mortal Kombat 4 cabinet as well as a Superman cabinet and then let us borrow, borrow the Judge Dredd side art. We, we were able to scan that in and um, now we, we have the choice if we can go to a full restoration of the original Judge Dredd cabinet. So we're very excited of that. Um, I think I was just talking with my guy Jim over at Reproductions and he had uh, printed out a set of the artwork. So I have to go check on that. And then I'll be, do we actually upgrade the cabinet or do we leave it with the original custom? We'll see, we'll see. Um, Brady asking uh, for Johnny Nero action hero. Great game, I, I've uh, got Will Carlin, one of the creators of that. I've got to talk with Will pretty soon. So, uh, you never know, maybe you'll see Judge uh, Johnny Nero Action Hero here at the arcade. We shall see, we shall see. Peter asking for any recent updates to the Neo Geo cabinet. Nothing, no new games going into the Neo Geo section recently. Um, obviously, we are always fine-tuning like monitors and stuff. I believe I did a cap kit on one of the Neo Geos, so they're looking really nice. Uh, Michael's saying, uh, drove 500 miles to come there in February. Can't wait to do it again. Greatest place ever. Thank you so much for that, man. Very much appreciate that. Um, Shane saying, true story. I wanted to buy a Flicky poster and pay Danielle to sign it. Instead, they custom made one and sent it no charge. You know, you were hanging out with us in that stream. That was such a monstrous stream when Danielle set the world record in Flicky. That, that's how we do it. It's, it's, that's just how it is. It was, it was so much fun. Uh, my guy, uh, Brandon, our lead, art, lead artist down at Productions had uh, such a, he had a fun time making that artwork. So um, the least we can do, you're coming out hanging out with us on stream, watching history be set as Danielle streamed. She streamed for days and it was so cool to hang out and just chat with everybody. Uh, no, no payment needed to do that. So thank you so much for doing that, man. Um, King saying, uh, I drove 822 miles to get there. Very awesome, man. Thank you for making the trip out. Uh, Efren saying, I was playing Frogger half the night when I was there Monday. I love Aliens shooting game in the last arcade building. Efren, so Aliens Extermination and Aliens Armageddon, our, our, Aliens Armageddon came from, uh, that was a test cabinet, uh, or development cabinet, I should say, from uh, George Petro and Scott Pekulski, uh over at Play Mechanics. So, so awesome to have them uh, like that's where we got the game. That game's got some history, so I'm glad you enjoyed it. Some Star Wars action going on. All of our Aliens games, Alien 3. We just rejuvenated this monitor, it's looking amazing. We've got Aliens Extermination and Aliens Armageddon. So, very, very awesome. Thomas Roth saying, uh, looking forward to seeing it at the arcade. Uh, arcade Addicts, uh, uh, Doc's Man and a Legend, thank you so much for that, man. Sending a thousand stars, thank you so much, man. Again, too good to us, man, too good to us. Uh, 
Timothy Ross saying the TNT twins can't wait to be out there. Uh, the weekend of the the week and the weekend for the anniversary. Thank you so much for that. The TNT twins are gonna be here. That's that's an event in and of itself. So make sure you join us for the anniversary. I'm, I can't wait to hear uh, some of the behind the scenes stories of uh, the twins and Todd Tucky over at. So anxious for that. Um, Gary's saying, House of the Dead. We have House of the Dead 1 and House of the Dead 4. You know, we've had, we've got a few cabinets have to be rearranged. House of the Dead 4 still hasn't hit its final landing spot. So we got to get that done this, before this weekend. Brady Rain saying, is the screaming lady on the side art of the exterminator cabinet? She is, that's her. You know, it's such an amazing thing. The, the artwork on all these cabinets is, like the games are amazing, but the artwork put into the games is also just super cool. Just super cool artwork everywhere you look. Dragon's Lair, Moon Shuttle, Blast it, Blasteroids, just love it all. Um, James saying you're doing a good job. Keep it up. Thank you so much. We will. We will. We'll keep going. Fat Chris saying the Three Stooges card real quick. Let me see it. We can do that. Right there. Fat Chris, third place on the card. He's going to be moving up. He's coming after Mike McCarthy's score. Bullmaster saying, uh, appreciate you always taking the time to chat with us on these live streams, Doc. Absolutely, I appreciate you all coming in and, and listening to, uh, to, to the stream. It's awesome. It's, uh, you know, we weren't sure if once we reopened, we were going to be uh, continuing to do them. And, you know, every day, 5 o'clock rolls around and it's like, yeah, let's go down and do some streaming. Dwayne saying, um... Hey Doc, good to see you. Did Nintendo make a dedicated cabinet for Duck Hunt? Saw one at a thrift store of all places. Just wondering if it's a real cabinet. So there was a uh, Duck Hunt cabinet and um, Hogan's Alley. So those are, they should look very similar to the uh, traditional Nintendo cabinets. A little bit thinner wood. Our Nintendo section. Looking pretty awesome. You know, I cannot wait to get a little more time on arm wrestling. I forget who I was talking to about that. It is, I love it. Love Nintendo arm wrestling. Uh, Timothy Ross saying, keep the ghost rocking. Absolutely, man. We'll, we will. We will. Fat Chris saying, uh, going to try for Three Stooges, Operation Thunderbolt, and Daytona this trip out. I do not doubt that you can uh, take all three of those scores. We will see. Looking forward to see what scores you put out. Efren's saying, Doc, can you invite Manco out on the arcade in October during the Halloween season? I can ask him. He, he checks in regularly. Um, it be always great talking with, with Manco, and uh, hopefully he'll be by soon. But, uh, yeah, we'll see if maybe October he's out here. He stopped by uh, on one of the Monday Mystery Games not too long ago. It was was uh, when we put out uh, Solvalu, and he was was just showing up. Um, Thomas Ross saying, "Go go Godzilla!" Let's go right over by Godzilla real quick. Recently, uh, we had yeah, right there. So good, the Toho logo. We upgraded the cabinet to be a 25 inch monitor. All the music, this came out in 93, so right when uh, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla was coming out. And they've got a bunch of different monsters, Megalon, Mecha King Ghidorah, Ghidor King Ghidorah, Gigan, Thank you, Godzilla. Godzilla himself. <laughs> Not one you're going to be finding at any other arcade in the U.S. for sure. Just outrageously rare game. Chris Davis saying, I live uh, 250 miles away from the Galloping Ghost. 
uh, probably like a six hour drive. If you're making the trip out, let us know you're coming. Thomas Ross sent in 1,270 stars. Thank you so, again, you guys, the TNT Twins, super generous, so good to the Galloping Ghost Arcade. Very much appreciate it, man. Very, very much appreciate that. Um, Everett talking about that X-Men, our great six-player X-Men cabinet. The thing is huge. I remember uh, Sam and Phil went out to go pick that up at a church, and uh, they brought it back. The church donated it. was amazing. It was upstairs, though, so a heavy cabinet to bring down and brought it back was fully working, it had an audio issue. Um, we fixed that and then it had um, some of the sticks, the uh, grommets were torn. So we we changed those and playing great now. Uh, Brady Rain's in, where's the Judge Dredd gun game? So that is currently uh, at the Actually, it's in by the Pinball expansion. We had to move some of the games from the Canton expansion down to Pinball until Canton is ready. Great news on the Canton expansion. The first step of the electric upgrade has been done, and we were hoping to have it ready by the time of the anniversary. Obviously, the way things are, it, that didn't work out, but we're working on it. We're working on it. We'll get there. We'll get there. Steve, what is up? Thank you for being here, man. Timothy Ross saying, um, you should go to the ghost with us. Let's uh, bring, bring your friends, of course. Shane Taylor. Steve asking, do we have Nintendo Sheriff? We don't have it on the arcade floor, but again, you never know what's going to be showing up on Monday Mystery, so make sure you uh, keep watching that. King saying, definitely need to find an irritating maze for Neo Geo. Absolutely great game. Very, very cool. Shoutouts to Lee. Thank you for joining us. Um, Ed saying, game request. Viper, the helicopter game where the cab you move around with handles. Very familiar with it. Perhaps, perhaps, maybe. Keep an eye out. Again, Monday Mystery. We've got about 190 games in the vaults. Who knows what'll be showing up next Monday. Uh, Ed San, he stops by on the way to Midwest Gaming Classic, maybe next year. Paul saying, uh, Danielle, we miss you. Come back to the arcade. We've been, she's been talking about it. She's been really thinking about playing some Darius. So we will see, we will see. Uh, Chung saying, amazing how you mention any game and I know where it is. Oh, of course. Each one is showing, like, spend so much time uh, on each of these games. We're fixing them, checking them, making sure they're working right. Each one means so much to me that uh, it's just one of those things, like, it just sticks in your head. Shane saying, that stream was a great experience. So much fun. It inspired my brother and I to do our own streams from our own home arcade. Very awesome. That's that's an amazing thing to hear. Like, we love that people get into streaming and showing off games and stuff. That's really cool. Efren saying, I'm so lucky to be living five minutes away from the arcade. Thank you for a galloping ghost. Oh, absolutely, man. It's, it's, it's been amazing watching it grow over the last 10 years. Um, Brian saying, Doc, what is your favorite Star Wars arcade game and why? Any cool memories? I can't wait to come back. So... I probably my most memorable. I know I had played uh, the Atari Star Wars uh, in an arcade at some point. Um, just an upright, not the sit down. There's so many people that have such a vivid memory of playing the sit down. I believe. You know, I'm thinking about. It, I might have played the sit down once at uh, Lions Family Fun Center. It just didn't stick in my mind. Obviously, probably Star Wars trilogy from Sega was the most mentally impactful of the ones I played in the late 90s. It was just a very cool game. Um, let's see. Tim saying back from work, tuning in. Thank you for being here. Brady saying uh, Invasion the Abductors. Sure, we can take a look at Invasion the Abductors. 
right there. Great game, a lot of fun. The first character that you see in that is actually George Petro. And uh, he gets picked up by the aliens. He gets abducted by the aliens, I should say. And turned into a to a to a an alien. So very, very cool game. A lot of stories on that game, just a lot of fun. You know, initially we were going to pass on getting that game, and then uh, Will Carlin ended up donating us one. The reason we were waiting on it, we wanted to get one with the um, the ray gun light guns on it and the reason we couldn't find it was because those were only on the prototypes and given only to the people that worked on the game so so happy that when Will donated that to us that those were the guns on it Dennis Aaron, I'm glad you keep streaming I look forward to it thank you so much we'll, we'll keep going with it Brian saying I love man cow very cool like if you're listening to him in the morning very awesome uh, keep keep supporting, keep tuning in. He often is giving away day passes and stuff, so listen for that. Sometimes he'll play a, an audio clip from an arcade game or a video game, and if you can guess what it is, you get a day pass. Um, let's see here. Timothy Ross saying we'll be bringing a TNT goodie bag to give some TNT stuff away. Very awesome. We'll definitely have some Galvin Go stuff for you. We got we got a, 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 a care package for you for you guys as well. Todd Tucky tuning in. Thank you so much for being here. Saying maybe even a side training card by Todd Tucky. That would how amazing would that be? Um, Todd saying Sean might be coming with the twins too. Very awesome, very awesome. So looking forward to seeing you guys. And definitely be ready for for uh, some surprises, to say the least. Brucina checking in. I'm sure she's checking in on the the gloves for today. They're here. They're here. Uh, let's see. Todd saying our uh, live best offer number sale number seven is this Saturday at TNTAmusements.com. It's free to sign up. Just 45 seconds, no money in, no money info taken at all. Watch on YouTube. I cannot recommend that enough. Make sure you check out his best offer sales. Todd stuff, so awesome. He's got so much, he's got so many items. Like I look back at, at our auction and Todd moves through the stuff quick. Runs a, a great, great show. So make sure you check out Todd's uh, TNT Amusements uh, best offer sale number seven. It's it's they're fun. They're just fun. Even if you're like ah, I'm not really looking for anything, tune in because puts out such crazy stuff that you might. Oh yeah, I do need that. So check it out for sure. Thanks, Todd, for for letting us know about that. That's this Saturday. I will uh, mark it on the calendar. Fat Chris saying only 11 more days. Anniversary fun starts then. Brucina saying what's the story behind the name Galloping Ghost? So the the logo, the Galloping Ghost logo, right there. Um, the original concept for it was uh, something that uh, was found in. A, there was a World War II book that my brother was transcribing. He ended up redrawing the logo, changing it up. He used it for his band back in the day. I thought it was the coolest thing. I took it, redrew it a bunch, and uh, changed it up. It's had some alterations over the years. We had um, the artist that did our extremely rare, hopefully never to be seen again, Dark Presence comic book. Uh, he redrew that artwork uh, for us and redid our logo, and uh, that is what you see there. So it has had its it, different iterations over the years, but that is the one that we finally went with. But it was originally off of a concept on a World War II bomber plane, and just stuck with it. Uh, I when I was. 15, going on to 16, I got uh, my Gallop and Ghost tattoo. Didn't have the company at the time. Um, when I was 16 is when it became my company logo. 
Uh, Tim saying I'll be there with the kids and friends. Very cool, looking forward to having you out. Efren saying I'll be there this Saturday again. I will be here too. Looking forward to having you by. Um, Tim saying, how's the journey to get Doc's gloves going? You better hurry, they're getting in worse and worse shape. These are, I had uh, cracked, cracked the Kevlar on them back when I was uh, practicing on the uh, Wing Chun dummy, but uh, haven't, haven't traded up to a new, new, uh, new set, new pair of gloves yet. Gabe saying, what's the story with Sailor Moon? So, Sailor Moon, obviously everybody knows the, the anime Sailor Moon. Um, there's, the board came out from Bam Presto, only in Japan, super rare. We found it years ago, brought it in. It's been on our list, we've got a two player cabinet for it. We've been talking for the longest time about upgrading it to a four player cabinet. It's a very fun four player beat em up, so. We'll see, we'll see, it's on, it's on the list, it's on the list. Chuck checking in. Thank you so much for being here, saying worth the drive. Amazing place. Thank you very much. Uh, Shane saying unrelated, but there's an episode of Scooby-Doo where uh, where are you called Gaggle of Galloping Ghosts? The term. There's a few other places that it gets brought up in. Uh, Red Grange went by Galloping Ghost. Um, the football player. Uh, when airplanes went missing, they would call them Galloping Ghosts. So there's a lot of lot of iterations of what the Galloping Ghost is, but Galloping Ghost Productions being the first company really kind of started it to be uh, just the Galloping Ghost is a, a, a gaming arcade brand and all the other things that we do. Um, Rosina saying the gloves are mine, sorry people. She did, she did lay claim first, she said she wanted them. Uh, Charles saying we need to have a battle Thunderdome style for, for the gloves. That would work too. Um, who gets them? Who gets them? We will see. We will see. Will they ever get pried off of my hands? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> um, Thomas Ross saying, uh, what's the game at the end of the row where you can, you just came from, uh, just past Toll Carnage is in the same row. Look for the cowboy. Oh, so that would be Bank Panic, released from Sega. Such an awesome game. Pick this up out in Iowa. Um, Jeremy Fox was, uh, we went out there, Jeremy was kind of interested in it, and I was like, dude, you gotta, you gotta let me get this one, because how cool is that? Original, dedicated. Jeremy has always been so good about that. He's like, oh, absolutely. And uh, now it's here, now it's here. Um, <laughs> RJ from, checking in from Canada saying that I'm going to have the gloves buried with me. I'll, I'll probably have a pair on uh, when I, I get... <laughs> when, when I'm done being here, I'll, I'll take a pair with me. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Hopefully that's not for a bit, so... But anyway, on that, I am going to take off. I'm going to get some stuff done around here. I see... Uh, Shady is walking about, got to talk with him, get some stuff rolling for the evening shift. And um, we got Eric is back up there, got to talk a little bit more with him. Pete's here, got to talk a little bit with him. So I really appreciate everybody hanging out, chatting. Been a lot of fun as always. Crazy how the time flies by. Uh, Gabe asking, what's the story without Foxy's? Uh, so out Foxy's I found uh, on auction in Japan, wasn't familiar with the game at the time, um, took a risk on it. I looked at it on MAME a little bit, and what an amazing game. And it was such a, MAME, a great place to research games before we brought them in. And Outfoxy's so amazing, so amazing that so many other arcades have started picking it up since we've had it here and absolutely love it. Amazing that we had the creator out here, unfortunately didn't get to talk to him, but absolutely love out Foxy's. 
But on that note, I am gonna wrap it up. I hope everybody has an amazing day. Thank you all for joining us. We'll be back tomorrow at 5 p.m. Um, let's see. Does the rumble respond? Charles asking, does the rumble response on the guns, frailings, extermination give you guys any trouble? What's the actual actuation count for those? I'll, I'll have to check on that. Um, hit me up, shoot me a, a private message and I'll, I'll try to answer that one for you, man. Uh, Timothy saying thank you again, man, the league, Doc. Uh, thank you so much, man. RJ saying especially the gloves. Jay, thank you so much. Until tomorrow, everybody, we'll be back at 5 p.m. for another fun stream. Hope everybody can join us then. Thank you all so much. Until then, this is Doc Mac from the Galloping Ghost Arcade, and we hope to see you around the arcade soon. Thanks a lot, everybody. Stay safe.